So what we wanted to d discuss as we're doing this trading session, we're looking at a real shop. We're looking at real numbers. We're looking at uh, your closed invoice summary. Uh, certainly, if you go to closed in detail, you can see uh, one technician, and you can see each job that he built out and then the vehicle time and his efficiency against those jobs. Where you're really looking at productivity is looking at your finished job summary report. And this is going to be the jobs marked finished for that week. Now, you could have, a, in Jeff's case, where he does a lot of engine work, uh, he fin they finished a couple of engine jobs that week, and so his time on finished jobs is going to be a lot higher than the actual time worked for that week. And so what we wanted to do in the KPI reports was allow you to see that the measurements you're looking at for shopper activity and the efficiency in the vehicle time against each one of those. So it becomes important for you to just be able to, our goals are always going to be based on a training session that you're able to click on reports, look at the headers, look at the reports, and understand the reports. So with Jeff, if I was looking at the finished job detail reports, then simply this would be the date the invoice was closed and then the date that the job was marked finished. So you can see he finished it on the 29th, and that was a 20-hour job and an 18-hour job. That's why he got to 60 hours, 62 hours that week. So you're able to see jobs that are when they were marked finished. So the, the when you have these really large jobs, that's when it's going to throw off uh, the reporting just for that particular week, but the month always takes care of itself. When we what we wanted to do with the KPI summary report was put and combine the time clock reports with the finished job reports. We just added this bar just to make it easier to read. You can see that in the case of Joe, <clears throat> he was here 43 hours. His vehicle time was 33. He was 10 hours on E time, so he was 76% productive. You can see that he billed out our marked jobs finished 37 hours. On that 37 hours, he had 26 hours of vehicle time and he's 140% efficient. So what I want you to understand is the difference between the vehicle time on jobs that are marked finished and the vehicle time based on when they're at the shop because you could have vehicle time that is against the actual time where the jobs aren't finished yet. But though both of these become really, really important. One thing that you'll see that that it's become evident to me and and we were you know we started the year off that you could move which is the second part of our class coming up you can move customer retention five percent by doing best practices you could move shop productivity five percent by managing uh priority per vehicle workflow and managing labor hours, and then we could move technician efficiency. One thing I'll tell you as a group is I don't see technician efficiency being the bar that gets moved. Your technician efficiency becomes a measurement because it's technician efficiency is going to vary per shop based on some shops sell more labor hours, some shops sell better, do a better job selling jobs, um, some you know, it, 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 so the the technician efficiency is it has too much to do with the type of service work skill level. You're just efficiency goes up over the technician becoming better at, at his job and the service advisor doing a better job of selling. So it becomes much more of a management. What's really surprised me is shop productivity. What's really surprised me forty. 30 to 40 percent of the technician's time, he's not working on cars, and that's a shop issue. And with this tool, you can instantly start the measurement process. 
You can start it, you know, a little at a time. But as we start looking at this, we we've made it, especially with the new dashboard, we 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 we've, we've made it to be. We made it no excuse, you know, not to use the product. And if you're not using, depending on what pieces you use now, we're saying, are you fully engaged in updating the next oil change due date and tracking maintenance due, doing the follow-up? That just simply works. The next step is to start managing priority per vehicle, workflow, managing, you know, your delivery notes and being fully engaged in managing your technician's workload. The reports have become killer. What's really become cool is what we've done with it. Our diligence in being able for you to be able to go to the 26th and go in and look at each one of your technicians. And so what we wanted to design was with this tab by day that you're able to see when he punched in for the day, when he went to lunch, when he timed out, what cars he worked on, and when he timed out for the day. You can see how many, what his vehicle time and his e time and his shop productivity just at a glance. We're not trying to overmanage guys. We're trying to give you a tool to look at. We're trying to give you a tool to say when was he idle. So you can see all the times that we automatically track that idle time. We wanted to make it extremely easy to edit that time. We've done that. We can say, well, he really came in at 7.50, and boom, it's updated, and the times are updated. We he forgot to clock in or clock out. He stayed clocked in. We've made it where you can manage and edit everything on the time clock now. This has been tedious. This has been... I had no idea we'd have to spend three months in purely on time on being able to edit your times, but being able to look at the times we've always had this, being able to edit the times we've had that, what we haven't had is being able to insert if they forgot to punch in and you wanted to add a time, we've now allow you to insert jobs. Now, the only reason that we added this is because I now have – shops that you're looking at right now, that the technicians actually come up and say, I, uh, the service advisor didn't time me out. He, I don't have enough time on that. They care. That you'd be surprised that your technicians are more concerned about productivity and efficiency than you are. And they look at this, especially your best guys. And so now we're able to look at it by day. You can see, well, wow, why was he on? Why did he have three hours of e-time? And you can just go well, quickly. He had an hour in between these jobs. He had an hour and a half between those two jobs. What happened? If it wasn't a real e time, I can I can add that time in now. And so, again, really allowing you to look at and manage this. Don't over manage it. It's just a tool. It's a tool. And so, but how easy is it for your technicians to use? how easy it is for your service advisors to use, and now you can look at <clears throat> finished jobs. So now we can see what got Mark finished that day and what his efficiency was per job. What the feedback I got from the people to, in the field that are really, really using this is, hey, the guy didn't punch in, or I want to be able to fix that stuff, or I didn't mark the job finished. So in order to... Go to the next step. What we did is on closed invoices, on jobs that he forgot to punch into or he didn't, how easy would it be in a closed invoice on a job that you can just simply double click it and fix the vehicle hours, fix the finish date, and mark it finished if they forgot to mark it finished. So we even went as far as for you to look at this each day and just say, not let's look at all your tags and just give me every job that wasn't marked finished so you can see if a job that needed to be marked finished that should have been paid. So now I can go in and I can fix. And this came from y'all's input of wanting to pay your technician on finished jobs and the, and the service advisor closing an invoice 
out that didn't that didn't have the jobs mark finished yet. So now we have the ability to fully allow you to edit that in this new release. So this is uh it's been fun, it's been a lot of work. Uh, we have a time management system that's super easy to use and manage. We have reports that are just absolutely meaningful. And what we wanted to do was give you a tool that absolutely makes sense, and there's no reason not to use it. And that's what we've done. So what our goal as a company has always been, how do we make it easier? How do we make it simpler? How do we keep growing every day? but also to take away it being the software the reason you're not getting the reason you're getting pushed back is because it's too hard to use. It's not on us now. It's on you guys putting the system in place and managing it. And if you're not going to manage it, it's not going to be done. The fact is we've got too many shops that are using this that I can dial in and run the reports and if you want to be part of that time management team that we're put together now and really look at efficiency and productivity and moving that bar. That's what we're about this year. We're not about adding tons of customers. We're about how do we help you become a better service center? How do we help your technicians have more time to work on cars? I'm not going to increase their, we're not going to increase their efficiency. We can increase their time of working on cars. And we can do that by managing priority hours and carryover hours.